Welcome to our show, The China Briefing. Today, we're diving into some fascinating stories from across Asia and beyond. First up, Cambodia has begun constructing a massive $1.7 billion canal funded by China, aiming to connect Phnom Penh to the Gulf of Thailand, despite environmental concerns and potential diplomatic tensions with Vietnam. Next, Asian stock markets have bounced back after a dramatic downturn, with Japan's Nikkei 225 leading the charge, soaring 10% after its worst day since 1987. Lastly, Hong Kong's chief executive John Lee has announced that Southeast Asian nations are backing Hong Kong's bid to join the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, trade pact, which could be a significant boost for the region's economic integration. Please stay tuned for the full details. CNN. Cambodia has initiated the construction of a contentious $1.7 billion canal, funded by China, to connect Phnom Penh to the sea. The Funan Teco Canal, stretching 180 kilometers, aims to reduce shipping costs and decrease reliance on Vietnamese ports. However, environmental concerns loom, particularly regarding the Mekong River, which sustains millions through its fish and agriculture. Vietnam is quietly worried about the impact on its Mekong Delta rice-growing region and the potential shift of Cambodian exports away from Vietnamese ports. The project seems to bolster support for Hun Manet, who recently took over from his father, Hun Sen, as Cambodia's leader. The canal, celebrated with a national holiday, is seen as a symbol of national pride and development, despite warnings from environmental groups about its potential detrimental effects on Vietnam's water resources and agriculture. CNN. Japanese stocks rebounded sharply on Tuesday, recovering most of their record losses from the previous day. The Nikkei 225 surged about 10%, with South Korea's Kospi and Hong Kong's Hang Seng also seeing gains. The previous day had seen the Nikkei drop 12.4%, its largest one-day fall since October 1987, leading to a global market rout. The recovery was driven by sound economic fundamentals and a lack of evidence suggesting a long-term abandonment of Japanese equities. Notable gainers included Kickerman Corporation, which rose 21% after a significant drop. The market turmoil was initially triggered by concerns about a U.S. recession and the rapid unwinding of yen carry trades, exacerbated by the Bank of Japan's recent hawkish monetary policy signals. New York Times. Asian investors regained some composure on Tuesday following a global sell-off triggered by fears of a U.S. recession. Japan's Nikkei 225 index rose 11% after a historic 12.4% plunge the previous day, the largest since the Black Monday crash of 1987. South Korean stocks also rebounded, recovering about 4% after significant losses. The sell-off began with concerns about the US economy and a strengthening yen, which could hurt Japanese corporate profits. A US jobs report showing a slowdown in hiring exacerbated fears, leading to a sharp decline in US markets. The Federal Reserve is expected to cut rates later this year, while the Bank of Japan recently raised its key rate, causing the yen to strengthen and spooking investors. The yen weakened slightly on Tuesday, but analysts predict continued market volatility until there is more clarity on the US economic outlook. Australian Broadcasting Corporation As Australia gears up for a federal election by May next year, Research highlights a significant gap in political literacy among the country's Chinese and South Asian migrant communities. Despite their enthusiasm to participate in the democratic process, many first-generation migrants struggle to understand how the Australian political system operates. This lack of knowledge has led to the spread of misinformation, particularly on platforms like WeChat, which has been used to disseminate false accusations and stigmatizing messages. Community leaders like Minwen Wu stress the need for combining English language programs with civic education to bridge this gap. Dr. Sukmani Korana's research, based on surveys and focus groups, underscores the importance of early and organized civic education to help migrants make informed choices in elections. CNN, Zebo, a once nondescript city in Shandong province, became a hotspot for domestic tourism in China due to its affordable barbecue grills, attracting special forces travelers who seek budget-friendly trips. These travelers, often young and on tight schedules, move swiftly from one destination to another, providing an economic boost to struggling cities amid China's slowing economy. 
However, this flash mob style tourism raises questions about its sustainability. Cities like Tianshui and Zibo have experienced short term booms followed by declines, highlighting the need for local authorities to educate small business owners about the risks of overinvestment and to diversify their tourism offerings to ensure long term benefits. Nikkei Asia, Hong Kong's chief executive John Lee has garnered support from Southeast Asian nations for the city's early accession to the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP. During his tour of Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos, Lee also promoted Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative and discussed expanding trade and visa arrangements. Despite increased governance from Beijing, Hong Kong retains some autonomy in trade policy and aims to leverage its experience in global finance to strengthen ties with ASEAN countries. Lee's strategic outreach is part of a broader effort to restore Hong Kong's international image post-COVID and amid the imposition of a 2020 security law. The city continues to act as a crucial financial hub, facilitating investments and fostering economic connections within the region. Nikkei Asia, Japanese trading houses backed by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway reported mixed results for the April-June quarter, largely surpassing market expectations but maintaining their annual earnings forecasts amid global political and economic uncertainties. Itochu, Mitsui and Company, Mitsubishi Corporation, Sumitomo Corporation, and Marubeni, which operate across diverse sectors including commodities, real estate, and clothing, saw their share prices plunge significantly due to a sharp appreciation of the Japanese yen following a Bank of Japan interest rate hike. Despite this, the shares rebounded the next day as the Nikkei stock average gained about 10%. Itochu's net profit fell short of market expectations, while Mitsubishi and Mitsui reported gains from asset sales. Sumitomo and Marubeni showed mixed results, with Sumitomo's energy sector expected to drive future performance. The trading houses, sensitive to currency fluctuations, have set their fiscal year currency estimates and highlighted uncertainties such as US political developments and China's economic slowdown. Guardian, a Tunisian court sentenced several potential presidential candidates to prison and barred them from running in the upcoming election, a move seen by critics as an attempt to eliminate serious competition against President Kais Sait. Among those sentenced were prominent politician Abdel Latif Meki, activist Nizar Chari, Judge Murad Masoudi, and candidate Adel Doe, all charged with vote buying. Abi Musi, a key opposition figure, received a two year sentence for insulting the election commission. The opposition and human rights groups have accused the government of using arbitrary restrictions to ensure Sait's re election. Despite these sentences, Meki's campaign manager declared their intention to submit his candidacy papers. President Sait, who dissolved parliament in 2021 and now rules by decree, denied imposing any restrictions on rivals and described his candidacy as part of a war of liberation. However, opposition parties argue that the judiciary is being pressured to suppress Sait's competitors, reminiscent of the pre-2011 dictatorship era. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email. Got a book so big and bright Open it and take a flight Learn about the stars and see Everything is here for me Flip the pages one by one Knowledge under the sun
Full of mystery.